This video introduces a little bit of the diversity of sponges, most of them from Southern California. We're going to organize that diversity using this phylogenetic hypothesis, and we'll see members of three of these four taxa, starting with calcarea. The first animal we'll look at is a species of Leucosilenia, which I collected from a dock in Alamitos Bay in Long Beach. I wanted to see this sponge in cross section, so I made a really rough cross section using a razor blade. Once I had a section that I thought looked good, I mounted it on a glass slide in a drop of seawater so I could look at the inner wall of the body with a compound microscope. While looking at this sponge with a dissection microscope, I noticed these small objects swimming around, and I realized I was seeing something I'd never seen before, Leucoselenia releasing its brooded larvae. These are called coeloblastula larvae, I think, although there are several other names for them in the literature as well.
Next, Grantia, a species I do not know where to find around Long Beach. So this specimen I bought preserved from a biological supply company. I don't know where it was originally collected. The bottom part is where it was attached to the substratum. The top is where the osculum is. And you can see the osculum better if you tilt it up and look down into it. Next up is a sponge that is very abundant in Rainbow Lagoon in downtown Long Beach. I don't know its name. We'll key it out at the end of this lab. For now, we can just call it the White Sponge from Rainbow Lagoon.
Fluorescein works really well for visualizing flow because it's very bright even at low concentrations, but you can do this with a number of other substances, like a common one that people use is half and half diluted with seawater, and there's probably many other substances, colored substances, that you could use as flow markers as well. Next, let's look at a yellow sponge that is quite common on docks in Alameda Bay. This one is from a dock near the mouth of the bay, uh, a dock that's right in front of the Ballast Point Brewery. It's hard to see much structure in sections of leuconoid sponges like this one. You just see dense tissue with some tiny canals in it. Those open up into a larger space that leads to the osculum. The coenocyte chambers are really small. We need a scanning electron microscope to see them. Here's another sponge whose name I don't know, a massive purple sponge from the shallow subtidal zone collected from the Long Beach break wall by a snorkeler, so not too deep, probably just a few meters. I don't think the large holes in this sponge are osculi. I think they're just where the sponge grew around symbiotic barnacles, and at one point in this video you'll see some barnacle feeding appendages coming out of one of those. There's no flow visible here. It looks like the fluorescein is just rolling down the side of this sponge. This sponge was actually in the lab for several weeks before I looked at it, so it's kind of not surprising. The sponge might, might not be happy. It might not actually even be alive.
Okay, here's another subtitle sponge collected by divers from a white point on the Palos Verde Peninsula, I think at about 10 or 12 meters depth. We have some dead specimens of a boring sponge, Clayona, and I mean boring in the sense of excavating a hole. The first one bored into the shell of the rock scallop, Crassodoma gigantea. In this specimen, the shell is broken, so when you turn it on its side, you can see the extent of the sponge damage to the shell. Surprise! By which I mean I just remembered. We have one more Dima sponge to look at, a bath sponge. This is a sponge that has a sponge in only skeleton with no spicules, either silicious or calcareous. You can imagine that bathers appreciate the absence of spicules in these sponges. Here are the spicules of the only hexactinellid sponge that we have to look at today, Euplectella. So the spicules, which are silicious, are mostly fused to each other to make a very rigid skeleton with a really well-defined pattern. You'll notice that we skipped looking at spicules for most species, but let's do it now for six of the species we've looked at. That process is pretty straightforward, and it's very important for figuring out the species of sponge that you're looking at.
To determine if spicules are silicious or calcareous, there's an easy test. You lower the pH of the solution. So calcium carbonate dissolves in acidic conditions, which gives off CO2. Silicious spicules are fine at low pH, so nothing happens to them. So here's when I added a drop of acid to these spicules of leucoselenia, and you can see what happens to them. The previous three sponges all had calcareous spicules, but the spicules of this yellow sponge and those of the next two species do not dissolve in acid, so they must be silicious spicules.
Spicules are not only used as skeletal and defensive structures in adult sponges, but they're also found in the gemules of freshwater sponges. Gemules are overwintering structures. They're basically a sphere of spongin filled with undifferentiated cells inside and a layer of special hooked spicules on the outside. You notice that I hadn't given you scientific names for several of the sponges that we looked at, and that's genuinely because I don't know their names. Sponges are often difficult for non-specialists to identify. But let's give one a try, and we'll use this book, The Sponges of California. It's really useful as a guide to identification, of course, but it's also useful because it defines all the terms associated with spicule form, and there are a lot of those, as you can see in these 20-odd pages of definitions and drawings. We'll try to identify the white sponge from Rainbow Lagoon. So here's the first step in the key. Decide between A, siliceous spicules, or B, calcareous spicules. So you remember how these behaved in acid. The spicules dissolve in acid, so they're clearly calcareous. So we choose B and go to page 217 next. Okay, so here's the couplet. A, the sponge is either born on a narrow stalk, at least one fourth to one third of the total height, like that, or B, no, no stalk. That brittle star is distracting, but there is definitely no stalk. So that means we go to page 218. So here, the choice is between consisting of masses of thin tubes, four millimeter or less in diameter, or not consisting of masses of tubes. It's definitely the latter, so we go to page 228. Okay, so here the choice is between sponges being tubular, cylindrical, flask or vase shaped, or upright, basically or sponges being oval or pear-shaped or amorphous. This sponge is pretty amorphous. So that means we go to page 232. Here we need to know if the sponge has a conspicuous oscular fringe of spicules. So spicules sticking out from around the border of the osculum. Take my word for it, ours did not have those. Also, it would need these very long oxias, which are rod-shaped spicules. Ours did not have those. Alternative is no fringe and oxias to 100 microns. I actually didn't see any oxias at all among the spicules, but I'm still going to go with B as the best fit. So we go to page 233. This couplet's pretty easy. Is it sac-shaped or is it amorphous? And we decided it feels like a long time ago that this was a pretty amorphous sponge. So we're gonna go with B here. If that's true, then this is Lucandra Los Angelensis. So let's see how that definition fits. It's encrusting, it's amorphous, size is fine, the oscules are the right dimensions, the color is right. 
What about the spicules? Well, look at that spicule drawing to the right. And it looks actually, all those were seen in the spicules that we looked at, except for the oxia, which is a sh uh, short straight one at the top. Um, but we might just have missed those. So we're missing the oxias. That's my only uncertainty here. But everything else is perfect, actually. And it lives in the inner title, which is reasonable in Southern California. So all in all, I'm pretty confident about this uh, identification, as confident as I ever am about sponges, really. So I'm going to qualify the success with a probably. But this white sponge from Rainbow Lagoon is probably Lucandra los angelensis.